Um, so we really appreciate the invitation opportunity to come out here today and present um, you know, just what ANSYS is all about. ACAMP is pretty actually uh, kind of, we were, I was talking to Kevin just a few minutes ago at lunch, how forward thinking ACAMP is in terms of you know, bringing simulation software in house for an incubator area like you know, an incubator company or organization and then having that as a ready, ready available tool for these newer companies, smaller companies who you know, may or may not have the time or money to invest in simulation software. Um, so you know, it's something that I think is a great model that should be replicated more often around um, North America and the world. And uh, uh, just uh, really applaud them for taking that kind of approach. Um, just to give a little bit of feedback about, oh, OK. So to give a little bit of feedback about, uh, or give you a little background on ANSYS. So we provide engineering simulation software. If you don't know what that means, in a couple slides I'll show you a nice overview of the types of software we offer and what it can do. Um, we've been around since 1970. Um, we're a worldwide company. Uh, we have you know, 13,000 customers. In fact, this slide's a little old. I believe we're probably the largest simulation provider, engineering simulation software provider in the world. Um, in terms of the products that we offer, ranges from structural analysis. So imagine, you know, just anything from just bending a rod. You know, so you have a steel rod and you want to bend it and you want to understand how much that rod will bend under a given load. Um, that's a structural analysis. And, you know, the example I show here, I'll talk about in a few slides. This is a, a hip prosthesis. Um, fluids application. So, you know, the Boeing 777, fully designed with CFD, you know, and that was using our Fluent software. Um, you know, we, you know, to give a little background on myself and the fact that I mentioned the Boeing plane, um, you know, our type, our software, you know, fluids especially, <coughs> structural, electromagnetics, very well used in um, industries like automotive, aerospace, um, even in MRI applications, it's really hard to validate an MRI <coughs> machine with a human being inside. That's the last thing you want to do is fry a guy, you know. So, you know, this type of modeling is indispensable, or indispensable rather. Um, you know, power generation too. These are areas where simulation has just been used for years and years and years. Um, healthcare is an area that's emerging. You know, I, I'd, when I first started at what was Fluent before we were acquired by ANSYS, um, I started doing this in 2001 specifically for healthcare. And many of the calls I got on people were like, is it validated? Does it work? You know, what is this? And nowadays it's more along the lines of, well, just show me, you know, I know it works now. This is the kind of conversation we have now. It's more along the lines of, you know, show me your software in action for my application. Because the examples aren't necessarily there, you know. Unlike automotive, where you can pretty much just type in automotive and fluid dynamics, and you can get probably 3,000 pictures of airflow going and little particles flying past cars and airplanes. So that's really my job. I spend about half my time with people like Jody, kind of showing off our software and showing how it works for specific applications. And I spend the other half of my time doing business and technology development. So it's really, you know, focusing our software in the right areas and saying, how do I use this general purpose tool that's used in many other, many other industries? How do we use it and apply it in healthcare successfully? Um, and that's my fun part. You know, I always tell people about half the time working with people like Jody, that's what's paying my paycheck. And then the other half is where I get to have fun, you know. Um, and this, this is actually some of the fun that we've done recently. Um, just overviewing uh, what goes into simulation. If you're wondering, okay, you know, maybe I want to do this simulation stuff. What kind of information do I need? The first thing you need is a geometry. And the first thing we look at is a fluid flow simulation on this upper line. So you need a geometry that you want to model. You need material properties. So in this case, we're going to look at blood flow through an artery. Uh, we need to know the density and viscosity of that blood. And we need a flow rate at the inlet. So we need some kind of boundary condition that's driving the flow through the system. Um, on the bottom part of the slide, uh, for a mechanical analysis, in this case, what we have is a femur. Uh, we're going to extract that femur from a medical scan. In this case, it's an x-ray. We're reconstructing from x-ray. Uh, we can also, uh, based on the brightness, uh, for a DEXA scan in particular, uh, there are correlations that relate the brightness of that scan on a point-by-point -point basis to the bone mineral density, the bone strength being the Young's modulus, and also the Poisson coefficient, or the compressibility of the bone. So we can also extract that data out from the scan and apply it spatially to the bone. Um, using another software from a commercial partner of ours, Anybody, um, they've created a reduced order model of the human musculoskeletal system. So imagine having all these muscles in a, uh, really uh, constructing a human body in a 1D sense. So every muscle is driven by a, a 1D um, activation model. 
um, but they're all positioned in the right way. Okay, so all the muscles are spatially oriented correctly, such that if you provide an input like walking, uh, that model will provide back to you what the forces are on all the joints. Okay, um, so with those kind of inputs, again, you know, common what's common here on top and bottom fluids and mechanicals. We need geometry, we need material properties, and we need boundary conditions. With those types of inputs, then we can do simulations such as what you see here. So wall shear stress, looking at the shear forces on the wall, pressure on the walls, and then the speed contours through. And if this slide wasn't so high, what I like to do is stand in front of the slide because that's actually me. So I had a you know, I had this scan like a, a few years back and uh, pulled this aorta from the scan and ran my own simulation. It was a lot of fun. And actually, this is more like in uh, 2004, 2005. And it was really cool because everyone's around my desk like, wow, Mark's really doing this stuff, you know. And it was really neat. And back then, it was still pretty new. Um, the other thing we can look at is, you know, stresses in bone. And if you are going to add an implant or optimize implant design, we can do that as well. Okay. So for the rest of my talk, I'm going to hit on, it's going to be very high level, you know. So what I want to do is hit on different market segments and just show how our software is used in those different market segments. The idea is that you're going to see a lot about different physics. So for example, things about fluid flow uh, and, and uh, mechanical analysis for pharmaceutical. You'll see similar things, electromagnetics, mechanical, um, again, more fluid flow, uh, drug delivery, scalar transport type stuff. And we're going to see that for pharma, drug delivery, um, uh, orthopedics, et cetera. So just, you know, for the next maybe six or seven slides, we're just going to see this high level review. And really the idea is playing the seeds in your mind of what's possible with simulation and then basically going up to Viet and say, Viet, I need some help, you know, because now this stuff that Mark talked about looks pretty neat. And they have all this software here. So pretty much everything we're talking about today, um, the capability is already here in-house at ACAMP. Um, so uh, for the pharma by our pharmaceutical industry, you know, they have these really big uh, mixing tanks. Uh, you know, maybe 2,000 liters, probably the smallest one you'll see. They can go up to 20,000 liter. And the idea is you want to just keep that reactor well mixed. The assumption is that if we don't have dead zones in there, then we're not going to have transport limitations, and we're making our drug to spec. Um, so it's really the main analysis that people tend to do. And they'll want to scale that process up. They might start from a bench scale, scale up through the pilot plant and manufacturing scale. All the time, you know, some of the components may be changing, and they want to optimize before building out that plant. Um, another one's a spray dryer. So you have a, a mixture of uh, droplets coming into the top of a spray dryer. It's a mixture of solvent and drug. You want to remove the solvent and be left with dry drug particles at the bottom that are ready for tableting. Okay, so we started here, made the drug. Now we're going to go over here and purify the drug. And what we show here is that, you know, imagine there's just some air flowing through. It's hot air, evaporating solvent. As we go to the bottom, um, we're plotting here residence time. And ho for particles that follow long paths and have a long residence time, hopefully they're dry. Um, particles that are too large might shortcut the spray dryer and come out still wet. So we haven't done our purification properly. Finally, now that we've purified that powder, we want to make tablets. So we come over this tablet compaction capability here in Ansys Mechanical. There's a model called the Drucker Prager CAP model that's in Ansys that's specifically for modeling de uh, compaction of granular materials. And we can just basically model the integrity of a tablet you know, within the mechanical software. Um, so, I, you know, up to, have, up to doing a project like that one with the tablet on the previous slide, I always took for granted it's just a tablet, you know. Everything you take for granted until you really dig into that engineering problem. And it's pretty interesting to see what the challenges are for that kind of application. Um, next one's electronic equipment. Uh, interesting one is uh, drug delivery to a tumor. So imagine you have a tumor in the front of your leg, poorly vascularized. How are we going to get drug to penetrate into that bone tumor and affect treatment? Um, one way to do that is to heat up. The, the bone and specifically the tumor itself, because if we heat it up, then that increases the diffusion coefficient of that drug, which means the drug's just able to better, better penetrate into the tumor and have a better treatment effect. Um, so we can place a leg within a ante phased antenna array and optimize the currents going through that array such that we're getting the heat delivery right to the tumor. Okay? Again, you know, instead of tuning that just like with an MRI, a patient in an MRI birdcage coil, we can do that tuning, because we're raising this about 5 to 7 degrees C, we can do that tuning in the software, avoid overheating the guys at like the back of his leg and all this other stuff, and really get 99% of the way there in the software, and then just do this fine tuning analysis um, later on. 